Alright, grass physics video. I have the same routine, I suppose. Well, slightly different. Uh, you know, just this general subject of what kind of um, conversation can be expected um, in doing this process of having an argument about um, our reality. Now, I would say that there's a clear parallel between something like an argument about religion and you say, well, what's the evidence point to? And you say, well, the evidence points to evolution. Clearly, the overwhelming um, preponderance of the evidence says evolution's the truth and most all the religions are hostile to that um, fact. Uh, that that's how we got here. Nothing special. Just another one of the players. Um, the competitors in a natural context. Uh, you know, no, no special creation necessary. Anyway, um, and clearly that discussion takes place and also clearly the only thing that gets in the way of the discussion being over very quickly because the evidence is so one-sided um, is traditional notions and devotions. So um, it's a fair comparison to argue that in the sciences the same biases exist, the same human frailties exist, and that the people arguing are arguing from positions of their dependencies, um, what they want to be truth, um, lots of stuff like that. So I could argue that, yes, I was never one to be convinced by, because somebody told me something. See, so when I was young, uh, before I became convertible, I uh, acquired the information, just through experience, that uh, my fellow humans around me were compulsive liars about anything important. Ask them something unimportant, and they were fairly honest. But ask them an important question, and yes, the silly response of, it's God's will, or some kind of vacuous mush. Santa Claus stories, Easter rabbits, all that kind of bullshit. And it just gave you this idea that, yeah, you're not, they're not going to tell you the truth. There's you know, either they're not going to tell you because they're patronizing you, or, you know, they're keeping it to themselves, or they don't know it. And it's that simple. Um, so, yeah, I was never uh, uh, devoted to in this religious position. So the idea that, oh, it's a cold, cruel, mechanical universe, yes, that seemed very easy to accept. All right, so I mean, enough of that context. But I mean, so I made this previous video just explaining some of this, these circumstances and how this really isn't about the quality of the um, theory I'm presenting. Um, it's about people and their biases. Um, and so the reverse guy um, makes another one of his snarky comments. And um, you know, I'd like to just challenge him instead of talking about what science is to explain who you are. What's your problem? I mean, I can sort of see your bias. Your icon is little galaxy, you know, fakely colored <laughs> galactic objects. So, yes, it looks a little bit wooey. Okay, like you're. Like you're a rainbow chaser, you know, not somebody who's looking for the truth, but um, we'll reserve that judgment and see if you can handle the responsibility to explain how you see my theory as some faith-based nonsense that doesn't conform to any of the evidence, and you see the bent space quantum mechanical mush, um, interpretations, um, <laughs> you know, no unification, no coherency between the different disciplines, like physics is, like, it's almost like physics from a different planet, you know, quantum mechanics is from Venus, and uh, bent space, and relativity is from Mars, those kind of problems. Anyway, 
All right, so he says, when are you going to realize that science isn't an open discussion like philosophy is? Well, again, the discussion about evolution was open, and it took place, and the rationalists won that argument in terms of most scientists will concede the evidence is conclusive. Um, that data and confirmation is paramount. Well, that's another, that's the question being asked here. Is that paramount? Because, you know, the accusation directly being made to you is that data and confirmation aren't paramount. That the headline on the New York Times was written without any context of pointing out, well, this is probably ain't right because this is a really delicate thing this guy is trying to see. <laughs> and he's um, seeing it in imperfect conditions. And there's a high probability he didn't see what he thinks he saw. Uh, but there's no context like that. And again, the experiment hasn't been uh, perfected in any way. It hasn't been done in any perfect way. And as I've pointed out, it could be, and it hasn't been. The Hubble telescope at any time can go, you know, a half radius from the sun and uh, watch everything swirl about. Um, not abstract ideas. So abstract by what? Because they have nothing to do with angels and bending forces and wavy things and completely undefined virtual photons. I mean, I went through this whole thing. I mean, your theory is the one with all the undefined bits, all the gap, God of the gap elements, where you just blame some invisible thing, the dark matter, for example. How is your theory not substantially based on elements that can't be verified because they don't exist <laughs> in any material form. <sighs> um, and you're calling my ideas abstract. So me pointing out that it's a real material universe and the forces are real things, not non-things. They're things, not non-things. They're not bent nothing. They're moving something. And I'm being the abstractist. I don't think so. that's an appropriate use of words. You think that's appropriate to call what I'm talking about abstract? Merely because it doesn't have gods and angels in it? You still don't understand the scientific method. No, I think you don't understand it. Because again, where have you confirmed anything? Wave theory. Confirmed? Uh, bending force. You know, if you can bend light, you should be able to bend magnetism and gravity. And go, go, go show me you bending some of it. Um, you keep saying stuff like science doesn't want to go there. I say some stuff like that because that's what it seems quite obvious. Like I said, you think about it and you say, look, 300 years ago a guy came up with this push idea. And push is so much more logical than a pull force. And they only had one problem. I mean, it did everything gravity does really well. And the only problem was this little thermodynamic problem. And did they try to fix that? Well, maybe they did. And they couldn't, because they didn't have the tools to do that then. But it's only one problem. And in a, in a world where we see things, you know, wrenches that, you know, fly through space for a very long time, it seems like they could have said, well, you know, maybe there is a solution. Because it happens that way. There is things that fly through the universe without friction with the bent space either with the ether. Alright, um, when you haven't provided a single piece of evidence, well again, uh, my only obligation, just like um, Darwin's obligation, he didn't have to make evidence. He didn't have to go dig up skeletons. All he had to do was go to people breeding animals. And all he had to do was look at the fossils already dug up. And then all he had to do was point to the animals already known to exist. And then he found some new ones, of course, to help. But, um, and he cataloged the evidence and said, look, this theory fits the evidence. This theory fits uh, the geological record and the fossil record and what we see in our actions. And how we can manipulate uh, the structure of organisms through this process of selection. No gods necessary. So, what are you saying he provided as new evidence? Or 
a unique prediction that can be verified. Well, what did he predict except there's, we're not going to find any angel fossils. I, you know, this whole obsession with prediction, again, in a world where we have already, you know, microscopes and telescopes, we have, we have looked at a lot of things for an awful long time. You're not going to predict, well, I predict that the sun will um, appear to rise <laughs> over the horizon tomorrow. I, I mean, you know, the prediction is in the matching the already existing evidence. I don't need to predict some new truth. But again, I have stated as predictions that it will be found that, no, lensing isn't a real phenomenon. You can't bend light. You can diffract it. Photons can hit something real and they can change their direction, but you can't bend them. <laughs> and uh, that, that can't be verified, okay? Prediction can be verified, right? My, my prediction right now can't be because I don't control NASA and I don't have the right to say point the stupid Hubble telescope a, a half radian away from the sun and let's see what's happening there. Um, I just don't get how you can call yourself draft science. So somehow it's outrageous for me to call it draft science if I spend seven years, well, six, whatever, um, researching the fields, the relevant fields, and um, modeling. Um, and I come up with a model that fits the evidence that can't be considered something that would be draft science. Drafting a scientific theory. Amazing. And not understand the simplest fundamentals of what makes science. So again, he says this makes science somehow. This idea, in my opinion, so Copenhagen and many worlds and where are string theory's predictions, by the way? Well, what is string theory predicted? Or what has it gotten right? I'm sorry, I don't, don't really understand. Yet it somehow is a real theory somehow. And, and what does it do? What is its um, fantastic prediction? What did it predict? Trump was going to get to an elected president? What, what exactly did it predict? String theory. Um, okay, I'll continue. Um, science. And that you haven't <coughs> in, internalized or understood a single thing I've said. What have you said? You're, you've just been rude and obnoxious. You haven't said anything. You haven't made a single counter argument to a single... I, I make the argument that there's no way you could just make up rubbish, okay, that fits all the conditions of gravity, magnetism, electricity, the strong nuclear force, and time dilation. Go ahead. Explain to me how you could make a simple model much, much simpler than any string theory, anything like that, that could fit all those conditions if it's just made up rubbish. <sighs> um, anyway, you've just plugged your ears to it. Again, what argument have you made that's relevant to what I claim to be the perfect match between what I theorize to be the mechanism and the existing evidence. What piece of existing evidence do you think is decisive, strong, that completely makes it impossible for what I say the mechanism is, for that to be the mechanism? I challenge you to provide me this profound and, and substantive evidence you think you have demonstrating that it's not theoretically possible. Go ahead. I mean, once you state that it's theoretically possible, I win the argument because my theory unifies physics and it doesn't leave all the questions unanswered. It explains magnetism. How it actually, it, it gives you, it doesn't do virtual photons. It explains gravity. It doesn't do bent space. It doesn't give you fake answers, it gives you real mechanical answers. So I win then. So once you, once you accept that it's theoretically possible that I'm right, that yes, it does seem to fit the evidence, then you're doomed to say you have to consider it a serious contender for the truth. 
and explain why you, you think it's rational for a person not to. So I'm challenging you. Don't tell me why science has closed its mind. I want to know why you have closed your mind. What piece of evidence convinces you I'm wrong? Um, I mean, you're the one, I, in my opinion, with the plugged ears. Uh, because you don't want to acknowledge that the burden of proof is on you. And I've met the burden of proof. My burden of proof is to explain all these things. And to, to, and, and to be able to account for how some kind of force could create magnetism. Because now the magnet's filtering the force. And, uh, and, to, be, and, and to have all of it be conservational. And to have no loose ends. And I've created a, a substantial, deep explanation and you're saying it's not substantial and not deep well then point out where it has huge gaps where it's just totally missing it just totally doesn't answer any of the questions and I haven't even touched on the nuclear forces and I said that that's this might be the hugest part of it the one that starts explaining a ton of stuff muons and everything else they just might be electrons that have been that had a proton between them and the proton was removed, and the two electrons are closer than they should be to each other. Um, you know, they would be in, in nature, so to speak. And the only way they're going to be, um, well, I, I won't go into it, but I'm just saying all of these subatomic particles that you've given names to may just be these particles in different arrangements. All right, so anyway... So, a guy called Edgar Reggie, 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 I don't know, Rock, Reggie, anyway, so what do you know about science, question mark, yes, the rude man. Um, have you personally gone through the data yourself and seen that gravity actually bends and that light behaves like a wave? Um, more substantial is do you will you concede that any evidence you have of those things is weak and circumstantial because that's what it is especially the wave stuff uh, have you seen these things personally or are you just another true believer um, it's a fair question but it's also it goes a little deeper I mean have you pondered the circumstance of the single slit experiment versus the double slit and then the the multi slit the diffraction gradient and the fact that that pattern and the single slit don't match um, mechanical waves and the only one that has any similarity is the double slit and that similarity kind of evaporates you know when you do the experiment correctly and you have the two patterns superimposed on each other then you lose even your connection to water waves and so when you ponder that truth, that there is no source of interference in a single slit, quite obviously, um, your brain doesn't say, yeah, that, that really isn't very good. <laughs> I mean, that correlation is weak. Because if it was a real correlation, the results would be sim more similar. There wouldn't be just that one little circumstantial similarity between the double slit and the double slit. Alright, so then the obnoxiously rude reverse responds to him. Have you done the experiments that show the Earth is round? He doesn't have to. See, that's, you're just playing games now, right? You think the evidence for bent space and for wave theory and for the fact that photons are an electromagnetic thing, even though they don't respond to electro or magnetic at all, and are supposed to be a gravity thing because they're bent by gravity. So um, it's kind of ironic that they don't have any gravity component when there's, you know, in their makeup when that's the thing that bends them. Um, but you think that evidence is the same as the evidence for a round Earth? I mean, the, the volumes of evidence the tons and tons and tons and tons of evidence. So you think it's the same kind of of comparison. Your, your confidence in bent space and the uh, Heisenberg and Huygens 
is as strong as your confidence in a round earth. You think the evidence is just as weighty, just as decisive, and nothing can challenge that theory. Unlike the, the, the flat earth people, right? So, only a completely silly theory that doesn't fit the evidence can, can, you know, where they distort what they look at and hide from the real facts, uh, could come up with a theory that could challenge the round earth theory. So where in my theory do you see that? Where have I hidden from your power facts? Where have I had to make up a preposterous conspiracies to deny the existence of the evidence? Where? All right. Um, uh, done the experiments yourself? Question mark. Like I say, it doesn't have to. The experiments are insanely um, <laughs> already been done in huge redundancy. No need to do them anymore. Um, the experiments yourself. Uh, done the math that brought people to the moon. Well, we know that's Newton's math fact. Um, so. You don't need bent space for that one. Um, studied this equipment yourself. Again, you don't need to for the theory of round earth. We're talking about your theory of bent space, okay, where the only thing you have is a vague notion of lensing and a correlation between velocity and time dilation, which doesn't necessarily mean bent space caused it. There's lots of explanations for why there's a correlation between velocity and perceptual degradation or clock retardation. <sighs> anyway, um, study the hoax, I guess. So again, he's making this preposterous comparison as if he has evidence so strong that it's as strong as the round earth, the evidence for the round earth. I mean, if the evidence was that strong, I wouldn't have bothered going on this search. You think the evidence for Copenhagen and many worlds and string theory and uh, field, uh, whatever it's called, <laughs> the, the quantum fields, and you think all the evidence for all those things that are talked about in physics is as good as the evidence for a round earth, even though all those theories are in conflict with each other. I'm just, uh, I mean, my simple argument is, is my theory is good enough to um, deserve the same kind of attention paid to those wacky theories that, in fact, don't unify physics. And mine does. Consistent with all the evidence. <sighs> the hard evidence. I mean, just the hard evidence. The really good evidence, it fits. Um, have you done the mathematics and quantum uh, and quantum mechanics? Well, that's just more bullshit, right? I mean, quantum mechanics isn't just one thing, by the way. Um, and what mathematics? Uh, Maxwell's equations. <laughs> I mean, you know, you can play these games, but I mean, the the it was originally called quantum thermodynamics. You know, it, it originally just talked about what happens when photons and electrons interact. It wasn't about wavy tons. Uh, that helped to build the microprocessor, microprocessor in your computer. Well, again, you say it was somehow important. I lived through that um, period in human history, and um, I'd argue that that was an inevitable process. Once they found the photoresistor, the solid state universe was off to the races um, because it was a huge necessity to find a more efficient way to control voltages than stupid tubes. And that's really all it is. The, the, you, know, you can pretend that quantum mechanics was somehow necessary to them figuring out how to dope uh, silicon, but it really wasn't. Um, DNA, question mark. I don't know. What, where's quantum mechanics done for anything for DNA? Uh, done the carbon dating yourself. So again, what does that have to do with any of this? So, so he's just going to take everything that there's evidence for and say, see, 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 these are all things that have evidence. As if the evidence of carbon dating, again, is, is 
is just as weak as the evidence for Ben's face. I don't think so. Ah, well, this is funny, right? Um, maybe it's magic, question mark. What about the details of evolutionary theory? Oh, I missed that sentence. So right there. What, where, where uh, let's say, when Gould came up with the idea of punctuated equilibrium, what evidence, what predictions? All he did was describe a mechanism, just like I'm describing, a mechanism, okay, that fit the evidence. That's it. He didn't make any predictions. He didn't, he didn't have to do anything special, but to create a theory, an explanation, that answered unanswered questions. I'm answering the question, how is magnetism created? I'm answering it. I'm answering the question, how is the strong force created? I'm answering it. Why does the earth fall to the sun? Well, because it's being pushed there. I'm answering it. All right. Um, done the, okay. Done the carbon dating yourself. That proves the earth is older than 6,000 years. So again, the argument that uh, um, God didn't make the earth, again, he's saying the evidence for bent space is so solid, it's like the evidence in the geological record for evolution. It's just as deep and solid as that. And I'm asking him, you really think that's a reasonable statement? You really think you have a volume of evidence as deep and as strong as the evidence for a for a you know four billion year old Earth. What about the experiments that prove the atom? Well, now you're getting into trouble because obviously the experiments that prove the atom are lots and lots of um, conditional statements uh, and assumptions based on thin evidence. Uh, prove the speed of light. Well, again, proving the speed of light is kind of a silly thing. Is you discover the speed of light, and you you find a way to establish it as a consistency. And yes, there's lots of different experiments that demonstrate that consistency. But clearly, they kept changing it slightly. So it's not another one of the greatest things you could say, you know, in terms of using it as an argument, because you want science to be a little better than that. What BS, right? Yes, yeah, so is, again, if you contend that physics has any unsubstantiated, un hardly proven, um, arrogant postulates for which we don't need to have any more discussion because we have the right answer, if you, do, if you, <laughs> you dare to do that, um, you've now said the Earth isn't round. Uh, you, you don't see that as just a complete bullshit argument. I'm asking you personally. You personally, if somebody made that kind of argument regarding evolution or some other subject, like a, a religious person said, oh, okay, so uh, 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 you believe uh, humans aren't guilty of crimes because uh, uh, it's determinism, or, you know, they made some kind of thing, you know, some kind of statement that it wasn't consistent with your beliefs. That's okay. That's a, that's a valid way to argue. Uh, what BS, right? Just like, um, I mean, any fallacious argument. You don't see the fallacy in that kind of argument. Because you don't believe in one thing, you don't believe in everything. Uh, I mean, you don't see that as a, a silly way to argue. Um, let's see. Uh, BS, right? Just like every other experiment that you haven't done yourself, question mark. The, the key point is, is that you have a few experiments that are critical to your statement that you're so convinced you don't want to hear, you don't even think people should talk about any other model. You think it's some kind of disgrace or you've offended your, your integrity or something because you're, you're forced to account to a better model and explain why it's not a better model. I mean, that's the challenge I'm presenting here. Explain to me how this model that answers the questions isn't a better model. 
Um, the formula is that used general relativity for GPS. Well, that's another dangerous place to go, okay? Because it doesn't explicitly use, uh, you know, the, the, the GPS comes off, off a little from what I understand. Uh, NASA is having some trouble with that. Um, you know, there's a few microseconds loose. Um, but again, that only proves a relationship between velocity and 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 the clock retardation. You know, the inability for um, clocks to tell accurate time. But I would imagine different clocks will tell what well, the inaccuracy will show in different ways. And as I pointed out, it seems rather logically intuitive to speculate that when things are moving, because they have a force inside of them. <laughs> that they're not going to function the same. Now, you haven't proven any explicit correlation, and I certainly would argue, if you wanted me another prediction, go ahead, try to move a human being half the speed of light, and I think I'm going to predict they're not going to survive, because complex chemistry isn't going to tolerate uh, all of that multitasking. Okay. Let's see. Um... Have you studied mass energy equivalencies in detail? Again, that he doesn't need to to question how deeply you understand the um, evidence for bent space and the evidence for wave theory. Those were the two challenges. You're claiming the evidence for those two things is so strong that no reasonable person could have any doubt that those are the correct theories. Um, nuclear bombs, what mystery, right? Well, you probably shouldn't go there either, because then I'll just point out how Einstein didn't think it was possible to make one, because he didn't think you could cause a sustainable chain reaction. One year before it was proven you could. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about history in general? Question. So again, now it's just broadened it to every subject on the earth. So the challenge isn't for you to explain how you have hard evidence of what you're saying, we will not accept any alternative theory conversation on these two subjects. These subjects are closed. You know, in the, in the magnetism one, you don't even have a theory. You have nothing. You have absolutely zero explanation about how it functions. A non-existent extra ton is created for the explicit purpose of traveling across space inciting movement in electrons, and then disappearing. That's your explanation. That's what physics is offering. And that you don't want to hear anything. No, no, we got it. That's the answer. Damn sure. <laughs> what the fuck we got to do any more conversation on that subject for? Close that book. That's your attitude. What else am I asking for than the right to make the argument? And you're saying, why should I have that expectation? I shouldn't have the expectation that I have some right to make an argument. And again, I'm challenging you to tell me why you don't find it persuasive. Why you personally don't find it persuasive. I'm making the argument. You've heard some of it. Why don't, aren't you persuaded? What exactly do you think is wrong with the theory? It unifies physics. It explains things that haven't been explained previously. And you're griping that it's not even worth thinking about. It's just uh, arbitrary and, and abstract. Defend that. Uh, let's see, were you there? No. Oh, uh, are you just a true believer then? <laughs> so, you know, that's another, another game people play is to use somebody else's words and throw them right back without ever answering the challenge. So anyway, um, the Edgar guy doesn't really uh, do anything constructive here. He just says, you're a ball ether. I pity you. I guess he would mean an eater or something. But I mean, I don't, you know, first off, um, even if somebody ate balls, that's their business. I don't see any reason why I should believe that's a bad thing to be. So that's just kind of rude. Um, and, yeah, that's just a, you know, you don't want to bother. Okay. I understand. I mean, I wouldn't want to tape all this shit either. <laughs> so, you know, just say, oh, I'm done talking. I mean, I made a bunch of points in my video. He didn't respond to it all, right? And then you 
challenge him to put up a little. And he, instead of demonstrating how he has really extensive knowledge in, regarding the evidence for um, relativity and the evidence for wave theory, Copenhagen or many worlds or whatever his wacky explanation is. I guess he really thinks Huygens happens, that an infinite number of micro mini waves fly out of photons. I mean, it's, you might as well just say the angels did it, right? What the fuck's the difference? Huygens is an explanation. It's just saying angels did it. Because there's no, absolutely no c rational cognition that you can apply to understand exactly how the smallest thing in the universe manages this task you know, of creating all these complex little bits to go out into the world and, and sense it for him and then tell him where to go. All right. So then reverse this. Response to original post, not the flat earther. Uh, the original post was yours, idiot. The point is, at the very... The point is, at the very least, I'd be... It, it'd be nice if you didn't make statements, accusations like that. Who's talking to? Better yet, acknowledge that, yeah, of course the scientific community isn't going to believe or even remotely consider. So it can't even remotely consider. And, and why can't it? Because it's, what, too, too busy selling books? I mean, <laughs> the scientific community should love the opportunity to defend their theory, to argue how it fits and how somebody else's theory doesn't. I mean, they certainly can't say my theory doesn't have details. I mean, there's lots of people who have theories, like the, the electric universe, you know, uh, Thunderbolts people. But they just say something silly, like, electricity did it. I mean, yeah, that's kind of, I can't argue with your electricity theory because it doesn't have any, it doesn't have any pits, it doesn't have any model, there's no mechanism. I can't do anything with a non-mechanism. And Cam Wheeler's got the same problem. So, I mean, but at least I'm providing a theory that doesn't have any of that nonsense. <sighs> anyway, better yet, acknowledge that, yeah, of course the scientific community isn't going to believe or even remotely consider one alternative theory out of thousands without evidence. Well, again, I, what evidence am I supposed to bring? I'm, I'm supposed to create some new phenomenon, okay, that, that shows up that's consistent with my theory. I mean, I'm not supposed to match the existing evidence. No, that would be a silly thing to do. I'm supposed to find some new phenomenon and say, see, the new phenomenon proves it. Well, no, my theory doesn't make a new th ph phenomenon. I think it will fix the 100 and whatever, 32 um, new fundamental particles they say exist. I think it will clean that mess up quite a bit. Um, but, yeah, I haven't gotten into all that yet. Um, but, I mean, what a just silly argument without evidence. So evidence, the evidence of consistency with every fact, just like Gould's theory of punctuated equilibrium, it fits the evidence, the geological record, slides right in perfectly with it. That's not evidence. A model that fits the existing evidence isn't evidence of the model's, hey, it might be a good one. That shouldn't be your response. When it perfectly fits the existing evidence, your response shouldn't be, that might be a good model. All right, anyway, it's just amazing. Uh, or the ability to make accurate predictions. So again, back to predictions. What prediction did Darwin make? What prediction did Gould make? Make any predictions. What prediction did string theory make? It's considered a theory. It's argued by the physics community. What is it predicted that it got right? Amazing. Um, there's, it, it, that's a no-brainer. So he says it's a, a no-brainer. Well, I'm challenging you that you have no brain if you think that's a rational standard. 
So you would just say there's no point in listening to Gould because he's not bringing anything new to the table. He's just matching the existing evidence. That's not good enough. So tell him to go fuck himself. That's what you're saying. Explain to me how that's not exactly what you're saying. Gould's theory is not worthy of consideration because it augments the existing theory. We don't need any augmentations. The theory is complete and finished. We don't need to change anything at all about our understanding of how evolutionary um, biology works. And because it doesn't bring anything new, new, no new evidence is brought to the table, fuck it. That's good science. It's a no-brainer that that's good science. Come on. I mean, I think you're an idiot, but I don't think that you're that stupid. And considering the extraordinary claim of unproving 100 years of physics. So you, you keep saying unproving 100 years of physics. You mean unproving two or three mistakes. That's all. Okay? Not 100 years of experiments. Not 100 years of data. How many times have I said Newton or Maxwell or Gauss or lots of these things? All good stuff. Nothing wrong with it. Because it didn't have any stupid theory shoved into it. Even though Maxwell was an ether nut, he didn't shove his ether into those factual uh, observations, what the experiment said. And neither did Newton put his religion into it. I mean, it's just such bullshit. So, so you think it's a fair claim. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to unprove 100 years of physics. I'm not just saying there was a few mistakes made in the axioms established, and once you make mistakes, you just keep building on the wrong foundation, and everything you build will crumble because you have you have built it. You're paving the path that goes nowhere. It's a it's a bridge to nowhere. You want to build the bridge. You want to invest the labor on the bridge to somewhere. Somewhere is a unificatable theory. Nowhere is piecemeal, you know, crazy glued together monstrosity. All right. It's going to require some extraordinary evidence. So again, it's, I think it's pretty extraordinary that I have a theory that matches the evidence for gravity, matches the evidence for uh, magnetism, matches the evidence for what we observe in terms of the relationship between velocity and time dilation, matches the evidence regarding how the nuclear forces hold the atom together. And of course the function of electrons and protons and electricity. I think that's extraordinary evidence. And that it unifies all those things through one mechanism that only has four, maybe, rules about interactions between red and black things. Uh, let's see. Um, it's going to require some extraordinary evidence. You've used this extraordinary evidence quote yourself, by the way. Yes, well, my claim is an extraordinary. My claim is completely ordinary. So you don't even you haven't even gotten that part right. I don't have any angels in my claim. I don't have a god in the gaps. I'm not saying dark matter did it. I'm not inventing an invisible man as an excuse for what happened. You're the one defending the invisible man. I mean, you can't get this right? I mean, how can you make this claim that I'm making an extraordinary claim? There's nothing extraordinary about saying, hey, this model fits the evidence better than your model. How is that an extraordinary? You're saying the, 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 the action of thinking it's possible to have a better model is an extraordinary perception. Somehow it's an extraordinarily bizarre perception that I, you could think there could possibly be a better model. There can't be. It's impossible. It's silly to think so. You're saying it's extraordinary to think there's a, it's a challengeable theory. And as I pointed out in the video you're responding to, you, did you answer the dilemma you have? that you're never probably going to unify bent space and quantum mechanics. So either one of them is wrong, 
are both of them are wrong. All right. A unique prediction to start with would be nice. So, so again, a unique prediction. I, I mean, how many times have people said this? Like that should mean something to a rational person in 2017. That I'm supposed to observe some new phenomenon in the universe and show how my theory fits it. Even though Einstein's could fit it too. And then how did I win? Right? I discover a new phenomenon that certainly my theory explains. But frankly, since Einstein's using the inverse square law too, maybe his theory will have an explanation for it too. So, so how's the prediction going to be of any value? I have to come up with some prediction. You're saying I have to discover some new truth, okay, that essentially just demonstrates there's no possibility that angels could exist or that God could exist. You're not saying I have to find something in the universe. Because there's nothing going to be in the universe. Again, we haven't done all of this science for 5,000 years. Human beings, you know, melting things and burning things and doing all these experiments. And you're saying that somehow all of that value hasn't gotten to the truth. Well, I'm arguing that we have a lot of evidence, a ton of evidence. And again, if you give me control over the experiments they do, give me control over the Hubble telescope. Okay, and maybe I can solve this tomorrow. Well, at least the 21st would be really easy. But the Hubble telescope can do it any day, really, so what's the difference? I mean, what's the difference, right? I mean, all this talk about this real important experiment and all this, the whole thing is going to happen on the 21st, and there's going to be all kinds of talk about it, and yet no one's dealing with the simple truth that the Hubble telescope could have resolved this years and years ago, decades ago, almost, right? It's 20 years anyway, right? But I just don't understand this prediction thing. I have given you predictions. I can't prove the predictions. I can't, I can't move human beings the speed of light, half the speed of light. So I can't prove those. I mean, what, what, what do you think a prediction, what would be the form of this thing that you're going to call the prediction? What if tomorrow, you know, on the, uh, the 21st, they don't, they don't, nobody verifies it with any hard evidence? And, and a couple of observers, like say, well, I'm sure there'll be some, some bozos who say they did it just because they want to get their name in the paper. So I'm sure there'll be some amateur saying, oh yeah, I found lensing. But what if a real observatory says... Yeah, no, we did it really hard. We looked at it really hard. Couldn't do it. Couldn't find it. Does, does that mean I win? Or does that just mean, well, that's only one part of Einstein's theory. doesn't mean that much. I mean, I would argue it doesn't mean that much. I mean, he should never have thought light was something other than a force from the first place. So it doesn't really change the equation at all, right? The fact that Einstein misunderstood and thought of light as being a material object, not a force. Well, I wouldn't crucify him for that. But if he was wrong because he made a false prediction, then can we just throw the whole theory out? Is that going to be the bargain? I mean, you, you people have just disgusting double standards. And, you know, it, this is just, again, I'm asking you. I'm asking you to tell me what, why, why are you so sure space is making planets follow geometry and it can't be a field of energy that pushes the earth into the sun and what makes you so sure that magnets create fake something field perturbations you know can wheel their whatever the field wobbles and the wobble hits the the conductor and makes the electrons move because they're wobbled by the field. Why are you so confident that's how it happens? And why do you think anything in my theory, any piece of it, any statement in it, oh, that's, that's just bizarrely God of the gaps. I mean, to, to think the universe could be made of elemental bits that have really simple functions, they move the speed of light, and the only difference is there are two qualities, and that there's material bits that filter those two bits of those two qualities. 
That's too extraordinary? Come on. You really think I can think about somebody reacting the way you're reacting and say, oh no, he's a fair cop. He's just looking for the truth. You really think you sound like somebody defending the truth. Because to me, you sound exactly like a zealot defending your God. Exactly like. Okay, another video. So, till it be the next time, and such. I don't think there's anything else. <sighs> People are quite insufferable. Um, anyway. Ah, there's something new. P, P, whatever it is. P, why can't any of these people have names that are, like, close to pronounceable? Ask Eddie 7111, whatever. Uh, I've been looking into this, and it doesn't make sense. Can you tell me what they think marks the start and end of a reference frame? Uh, well, this start and end would be the the material elements, so any material components related to the players, and relationships can't be like my relationship to Venus, really, and would have to be a little stronger relationship than that. Um, are they saying the spaceship is the frame? Well, clearly they're saying the interactions between the the things moving. It, you know, the the field between the two things, the straight lines between the two things, something like that, uh, are the only things relevant. Because something on the outside isn't necessarily going to be affected by the effects. But I don't know. Uh, what if you're in space? Isn't it a non-physical boundary? Thanks. It's a... the The point is, is that yeah, I, well, look, I tend to agree, okay? Yes, it doesn't make any sense, frames. Because they don't think they, they say, you're thinking about it wrong, it's not a real frame. Well, it's a real frame when light is going, doing the headlighty thing, and <laughs> thinks real things are happening. It's a real frame. Um, uh... But yeah, it's mostly just about the perception change. So if we take the perception change out, we just talk about the mechanical things that happen, then you could argue there's no frame. Okay, the eye, the, because the outside observer will see all the light, the headlight effect. They'll see it. The outside observer sees the photons traveling not perpendicular. So clearly the frame evaporates in that sense. So we just take the perception crap out, like whose clock is moving what speed, and just deal with what the physical facts are, then the frame can evaporate. And the question is, is, is it sensible, reasonable, um, to argue that you know that's how photons react when, you know, we have weak evidence if not non-existent evidence for many of the supposed phenomenon. Well, like the, the, the gaining of mass with acceleration. Apparently that doesn't happen in accelerators. Anyway, uh, until the next time.